grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit our Comforter and Guide. For our meditation today from the Gospel according to St John, chapter 20. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that on the day of resurrection you appeared to your disciples and that following week you appeared to Thomas and that you opened the eyes of our hearts that we may see you also. As you spoke words of peace and forgiveness to your disciples, we thank you that you speak those same words to us today. So sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. What is trust? What does it mean to trust someone? We all know that trust is very important in life, isn't it? Trust is the foundation, really, for a happy marriage or good relationships in home and family. Trust is important in our work relationships and in our business dealings. And we could spend a long time talking about trust at this level. Who do you trust? Before you is that image of a, a person on a high wire many years ago put a high wire across Niagara Falls and he asked the crowd, could I make it there and back with this wheelbarrow? And they said yes, and he did. And upon his return he asked the crowd again, do you think I could make it across but this time with somebody in the wheelbarrow? And they all said yes. And then he asked, now who will trust me and join me in the barrow and there was silence who do you trust a number of years ago an election here in australia was fought along those lines there was some debate about an incident in relation to some people arriving by boat and whether some had fallen overboard and the opposition said the government was lying and when the then prime minister announced the election uh, and this particular message from the opposition was gaining traction in the media, the then Prime Minister began his election speech by asking this question, who do you trust? And he listed the government's economic achievements since taking office and many other things, and then asked, do you trust the opposition? And in many ways he flipped that question over and it became an election about who do you trust, not only on a single issue, but more broadly, who do you trust? And also, what should we do when we feel that trust has been betrayed? There are many levels where all of us have experienced some form of a betrayal of trust in relationships or in other areas of life. And sometimes it may cause us to doubt not only an individual, but also an institution. Recently, a very high-profile church person um, gained an acquittal from the High Court in relation to abuse. And many people are angry and upset. Angry and upset, not at the High Court, but at the institution that person represented. They even vandalised church buildings, church buildings that other people had attended, other people had paid for, countless faith faithful, everyday people. Who do you trust? What happens when you feel that your trust is betrayed? Anger, of course, is an understandable response. There's also other feelings of depression or the like. Now, in our Gospel for today, we have a, a story about trust at so many levels. You know this uh, story very well, how on the day of resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples and he said to them, peace be with you. Now the disciples should have actually been expecting this because many times before his death, Jesus had spoken quite plainly about how he had to go to Jerusalem, how he would be handed over to the leaders, how he would suffer and die and be buried and on the third day be raised from the dead. And yet we also know that the disciples were uncertain about this. 
In Luke chapter 24, there's the account of the disciples on the road to Emmaus and Jesus appearing to them. And when Jesus spoke to them, they did not recognise him. When Jesus spoke to them and asked them what they were downcast about, they said, we had hoped. And those words imply that they thought they would not see Jesus again. And of course, Jesus does appear to his disciples on the day of resurrection. And he says to them, peace be with you. And he shows them his hands and his side uh, as proof, let's say. And again, Jesus says, peace be with you as the Father has sent me. I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. These are incredible words from Jesus. He speaks about peace. And we know that that word peace in the Hebrew means wholeness, completeness, prosperity. So many things, that word peace. And he says, this is yours. And then he also ties that up with the words of forgiveness. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. Jesus entrusts to his church an incredible message, a message that is to go out into all the world about forgiveness of sin. And of course, this changes our relationships, doesn't it? The way we see relationships. Now, we know what happens next, of course. Thomas is not present on that evening for whatever reason. And the disciples say to him, we have seen the Lord. And understandably, Thomas says he doesn't believe them. If you went to a church building one Sunday and all the people there said the previous Sunday that Jesus had appeared to them in bodily form and spoken to all of them and they had seen him and they had literally touched him, what would you say? And so Thomas says, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Thomas is simply asking for the same proof the other disciples had experienced. If you've seen him like this, why shouldn't I? And we know what happens next, of course. Jesus appears to Thomas, and Jesus says to him, Peace be with you. Again those words. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. There's much we can meditate on in this particular Bible passage. Jesus said to Thomas, reach out your hand and put it to my side. Put your finger, see my hands. We're not actually told whether or not Thomas actually did this already perhaps that great journey of faith but there's also this word of jesus sometimes translated as stop doubting and believe but perhaps more correctly be not unbelieving but believe now we might see this as something like a command from jesus don't be doubting don't be unbelieving but be believing but perhaps more correctly it's it we should see these words as words of encouragement just like a parent to a child when they know that they can do something when they say they can't. Be not unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas then makes those great, that great confession of faith. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. These are very important words in the Bible because this is the first time within the New Testament we have a very clear proclamation from a believer that Jesus is God, my Lord and my God. And what Thomas is led to say here is that if you want to see God, know God, you need to look to Jesus. Here is your Lord. Here is your God. Some people claim to be on a search for God and they look to the stars or they look to nature, even they look within themselves in their own experiences of what they see as God. But Thomas is telling us we need to look outside ourselves to Jesus. Here is your Lord. Here is your God. And Jesus, of course, said those same words to Thomas as he said to the disciples. And he says those same words to you and I. Peace. 
be with you. What does it mean to trust someone? Sometimes in our lives we feel that trust has been betrayed and broken. And really that is a common human experience. We live in a broken world, a sin-filled world. People around us do lie. They do do things wrong. And if we can be honest with ourselves, we will see where we also have failed and towards others as well. But in these situations, Jesus says, peace be with you. He says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And at one level, these words, of course, are about the ministry of the church to go out, the ministry of the church in relation to pastors to proclaim that forgiveness of sins. But at another level, it's really a word for all of us in the journey of life. To see that Jesus is alive, he changes our view of things. He says, peace be with you. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. Now, by the way, when Jesus says these words, our sins are forgiven, it does not condone someone doing something wrong, nor does it mean that we should ignore the consequences if someone has done something wrong, but it transforms our hearts, our view of everything. In our psalm for today, a psalm which uh, Peter, by the way, quoted as he proclaimed that Jesus was risen from the dead, we hear this word, Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. What is faith? What is trust? In the end, our faith and trust has to be anchored in something that is real and certain. When it comes to the resurrection of the dead, someone has told you that Jesus is risen. And that person didn't make that story up. Someone told them. And if you keep going back about who told who, you end up with these very disciples. You end up with a person like Thomas who saw the Lord Jesus and who wrote these words down for us. Our faith is not a faith that it may be so, but because it is so. And because the object of our faith is what's important and not the subject, and what I mean by that is sometimes we have the ups and downs in life that does not change the efficacy of what Jesus has done for us. Take, for example, a doctor who prescribes you medicine. You might doubt whether it will work, but the efficacy, the effectiveness of that medicine does not rest in your faith, but in the medicine itself. Yes, your faith may affect whether you take it and your attitude toward it, but that medicine is effective nevertheless. Our faith, the object of our faith, is the risen Lord Jesus. And he says to us, he says to you, peace be with you. We can reflect on what faith and trust is. And we can reflect on many levels about our experiences where faith and trust has been betrayed or broken. But the Jesus who said he must suffer and die and be raised from the dead is risen indeed. And he says to you, peace be with you. You have forgiveness. And that forgiveness extends to those around you. May you know God's love, his presence and his peace in your life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we do thank and praise you that you are indeed risen from the dead. And we thank and praise you that you appear to the disciples and your message was about peace and forgiveness and your presence in your word. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you always open the eyes of our faith to your word, 
your word of forgiveness, your word of peace and your presence with us. Thank you for walking with us in the ups and the downs of our lives. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts, your minds, safe in Christ Jesus. Amen.